In this module, we will study fluid flow and the application of numerical methods to fluid flow phenomenon. The CFD process starts by creating a part or assembly in Inventor or a CAD program. This part or assembly is then transferred to the CFD software, where you create a new CF design study. The Edit Geometry task will clean up the geometry and remove geometric features that may cause meshing problems. Some geometry may come in cleanly and not require this step. After the geometry is ready, then material properties can be assigned to various parts. Next, boundary conditions are assigned to the geometry, which could be edges, surface, surfaces, or volumes. With the geometry, material, and boundary condition information, the CFD mesher can create a mesh automatically. There are tools available to refine this mesh in specific areas. Before we can solve the CFD problem, we have to determine the type of physics present and choose extra results to post-process. Now we are ready to solve. Do the actual number crunching. We now have discretized the geometry and have set up the discretization of the equations. After the CFD solution finishes, we can query and examine the results to learn about the behavior of the design and to suggest new design changes. For this example, a 2D airfoil shape is built in Inventor. The points are read in from a spreadsheet and connected with spline fit lines. The enclosed shape is then used to create a boundary patch. Inventor boundary patches are treated as 2D surface bodies by CFD. For 2D CFD analyses, the 2D CAD geometry should contain boundary patches for each part or 2D surface used in the CFD analysis. An inventor part for the first 2D example has already been created. Now we start with the CFD preprocessing task. We begin by creating a new CFD design study and choosing the CAD part that we've already built. We give the design study a name that will be identifiable for us. So we're going to call this our Onera Airfoil Design Study. When we hit Create, the Edit Geometry task will appear. On the Edit Geometry task window, we see that there are edges to be merged, and we're going to go ahead and merge those edges. And there are also small objects, or there may be small objects, that should be removed, and we'll remove those if there are small objects. Since the spline fit of the airfoil shape has many lines that comprise the body, CFD recognizes that these are separate lines, but they form a single shape. Since the CFD mesh algorithm uses the length of edges to determine element sizes, these small edges may cause a much smaller mesh size than is necessary. If the edges or lines are merged, since they form a single shape, the mesh size can be determined more appropriately. Also on this edit geometry task is the ability to remove these small geometry features that may not be relevant to the design and also may cause meshing difficulties or at least a very large mesh. So we can remove those small geometry features as well. With the geometry ready for meshing, we can proceed to assign materials and their properties like viscosity and density to the CFD model. There are a number of choices for materials and types of materials. First, we're going to orient our geometry and expand the graphics window so we can see. So there's two surfaces, the airfoil shape and the air box around it. So we're going to choose the airfoil shape. You can see that there's several different material choice types. You're already familiar with fluid and solid material types. The other types will be dealt with in later videos. For the airfoil itself, we choose the solid material type. And within the solid materials, there's a long list of available materials. If the material that you're studying is not in the list, you can create a new one. We're going to choose ABS polycarbonate or the airfoil. For the air box around the airfoil, we're going to choose the fluid type to be the material type to be fluid. And then again, you can see that there's a long list of different fluids that we can choose for the fluid that we want. And if the material that you're looking for is not on the list, you can add it. We find air and we're going to use air for our material type.
we are now ready to assign the boundary conditions to the CFD model. The first boundary condition that we are going to assign is that of the free stream, the area above and below the airfoil. For external flow, this free stream boundary condition is considered a slip flow condition. So we select the edges of the free stream boundary and assign the free stream boundary condition. Then we can assign the inlet. For this analysis, the airfoil is traveling at 200 miles per hour. For our CFD analysis, we fix the airfoil and assign an inlet velocity of 200 miles per hour. We are essentially traveling on the airfoil, so the air moving around us looks like it is coming at us at 200 miles per hour. Finally, we can assign the outlet as pressure equals zero for atmospheric pressure. Notice that there are a lot of other boundary condition types available. We will look at some of these other boundary condition types in a later video. Also notice that we did not specify any wall boundary conditions on the airfoil shape. This is because Autodesk CFD automatically assigns the wall boundary condition to any external surface or surface between two materials as a wall. Keep this in mind if you forget to apply a boundary condition. Autodesk CFD will automatically assign that condition as a wall by default. Now that we have the materials and boundary conditions defined, we are ready to mesh. Autodesk CFD automatically creates the finite element mesh, that is, it discretizes the geometry required to do the CFD calculations. The CFD mesher assigns element size based on local element, element lengths, where the edges are small, the elements are small. We can refine these elements by using the refining bar. We'll spread the changes from that refinement and we'll apply our mesh. Where the edges are small, the elements are small. Where these small edges are is also the location of the largest gradients. Thus, it's appropriate for the smaller elements to be here. And our airfoil, the small edges are those that make up the airfoil. Next, we are ready to assign the physics for our solution. The red values are the default values for, for each of the different physics types. For our situation, the incompressible and turbulent and adiabatic are all appropriate, so we can use all the defaults. And we're also going to do a steady state calculation. On the results quantity window, we can select additional variables to post-process. In this case, it's a 2D analysis stream function will produce the streamlines for the flow. Now we are ready to, to solve the solution. As Autodesk CFD solves the discretized equations, the current results are plotted in the top graphics window. You can change the result quantity that you see here using the global result drop-down menu at the top right of the ribbon. Also plotted in the output window are the average values of the dependent variables as the solution progresses. Remember we chose to run 500 iterations. However, the solution converged in 279 iterations. Autodesk CFD automatically assesses whether the solution is converged or not. Shown on this slide are some of the global results and the vectors for the velocity indicating the fluid flow around the airfoil. You can click other results to see the distribution of some of the other variables available. As mentioned in an earlier video, the CFD solution becomes more accurate as we increase the number of nodes. At some point, adding more nodes will have no practical impact on the CFD solution. When this happens, we say that the CFD solution is now grid independent. This is as accurate as we can achieve with our CFD software. To perform grid independent studies, you can clone a scenario and refine the mesh or add more nodes to the CFD solution and see if it changes the solution. Here we choose the part that we've already meshed in the first scenario and we refine it yet again. We'll slide the bar all the way over and apply the changes and spread those changes into the fluid domain and apply that and then we're ready to solve again. In the plot on the left, you can see where the x velocity becomes negative. This is an indication of reverse flow. So the flow is separating on this downstream end of the airfoil. The separation region will increase the drag force, force on the airfoil. The sep separation region is due to the adverse pressure gradient here, as shown in the plot on the right of the pressure in this region. Note that the actual values of pressure are shown in the bottom information bar. As you hover the mouse over the model, the location of the mouse and the value of the variable being plotted are shown in the information bar. 
For this model, we are interested in the drag and lift forces. We can calculate these forces using the wall calculator. First, select the airfoil surfaces, click Forces and Pressure, then click Calculate. From the output window, you see that the drag, or FX, is 0.124 pounds force, and the lift, or FY, is 0.431 pounds force. The lift could be increased if the low pressure region under the airfoil can be eliminated. As mentioned in the previous slide, the drag force could be reduced if the separation region on the downstream end of the top of the airfoil could be reduced or eliminated. This concludes our video showing the CFD process for a 2D fuel flow analysis.